everybody, and won't you come play with us this morning on Wake Up Missoula. I am Scott Ramph. And I am Noelle McAvoy. That was Asaf Adonai on piano with a lovely rendition of, is that Twinkle that Twinkle the, Little Star? No, that is what the, is it? well, it is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, yeah. but it's known as the alphabet song. Oh, cool. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I thought it was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, so I've been wrong my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> My okay. parents lied to me. Well, but, like it's like when you go through the AB, ABCs and oh, yeah. was that a bug? Yeah, there was a spider on you. Oh, huh. I, then I knew it felt something weird on me. Uh, yeah, I just kind of ignored weird. it. I was hoping it was just gonna go away by itself. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, after that incident, you know, like every like I honestly like you cannot not think of that song when you do the ABCs. It's true. Because like you look into the phone book and you're just like, okay, so what comes? Okay, so. Um, Q. So what comes before Q? Okay, and then yeah, you basically get to the whole alphabet song in your head until you get to what the letter is before Q. Yeah, it's true. Well, all those songs all sound the same. Like all the nursery rhymes. Like, come on, man, we need some variety. Mm -hmm. But we have a great show for you guys. We have three groups of guests yes. on today. We've got our friends from Missoula Aging Services. Yes, for we their monthly visit. Yep, for their monthly visit, we're gonna hear all about a human trafficking, anti-human trafficking event. And then also we've got Nikki Rabon. She's yep. going to tell us all about uh, Give Local Community Celebration today. Cool. And yeah. of course, uh, today we can expect uh, the weather to be uh, pretty much the same. Uh, it, it's been clear. Last time it was like perfectly clear. Oh, yeah. you they said you could they, they, they said you could see Mars. Like I apparently totally saw Mars. Mars. I, Mars is I, I out there. Me and Mars I were think hanging out. you were just full of crap. I think you just don't like stars. Oh, okay. Scott but anyways, stars. <laughs> they're there. <laughs> but you could see them, and it was clear last night, and it was clear this morning. It was a nice, it's a definitely nice morning, but you can expect that to change with a 20 to a 50% chance of rain today, which basically t the weather tells you is that they have no idea whether it's going to rain or not today. Yeah, they um, just have no clue. But it's going to be a high of 62 degrees outside. Um, later this week, um, it's supposed to cool down even more, and it's supposed to get pretty much the same amount of rain we've been getting the last week, last couple of weeks. It's feels mm -hmm. like um, well that's yeah. nice because it's so lush and green out yeah but I'm totally fine like with it. In, in Montana it only takes like one really dry day and then boom fires yeah I know, I know. It, <laughs> it doesn't really matter if it rains like a million like a million gallons though so, the river is pretty high I don't yeah. know if you guys remember like five years ago the river flooded because we had so much rain so that's what I'm kind of worried about yeah. now oh yeah I mean like flooding is uh, is very common especially this time of year are you just double checking to make yeah sure I don't yeah have a spider? that bug well yeah I flicked it off and then I saw it crawling around on the ground and like trying to figure out which way it was gonna go. I was like, that bug is too smart. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> but I didn't want to kill you're it. You're very, you're very cavalier about it. Yeah. Some people are just like, f like freak out if they see like a, a spider or anything like that. We're on live television. We gotta compose ourselves. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Zen. <laughs> but uh, we do have a new program um, tonight. Um, oh. It's something that I edited um, through the Missoula Agent Services. Oh, great. So, and that's going to be on tonight at 7 p.m. And this is their um, estate planning for everybody. So <laughs> I'm going to show this video. And then when we come back, we'll have the guys from Missoula Agent Service talking about Elder Abuse Awareness Month. So stay with us. Now let's take a look at this tenancy in common. Uh, it's not a real popular way of holding property in Montana, which is kind of surprising in a lot of ways because what tenancy in common means is that each individual owns an undivided interest. So if we had two people and we had a house here, it's not like we draw a line down the center of the house and say, well, John owns this half and Mary owns this half. No, they own an undivided interest in that property. So let's say, in this case, then, if we had the $800,000, husband owns half of four hundred, dollars wife owns half with four hundred. dollars Okay, husband dies. Sorry, guys, I still have the husband's dying first. So we want to know, then, it's his interest that's passing. See, she already owns $400,000. We go back to that rule that Montana has, and we say the first 200000 goes to the surviving spouse, three-quarters of the balance, and then one-fourth then goes to the parents. So the amount then changes for what the wife receives and what the parents receive. Now they receive 25000 all right, we're here with a whole bunch of people, and you guys are here to talk about Elder Abuse Awareness Month. So please, uh, introduce yourselves, starting with Janice. I'm Janice Hines with Adult Protective Services. 
Renee Libreshanks with Missoula Aging Services. And I'm Detective Glenville Keaty with Missoula County Sheriff's Office. Awesome. Right. And so uh, we know that Missoula Aging Services has a wonderful mission. Will you please tell us about it? Yes. We promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. And SMP, which is the program that is helping facilitate these, this event that we're putting on, actually empowers people to prevent health care fraud, waste, and abuse, which can have financial and health uh, implications. So we're we're on the broader spectrum looking at financial elder abuse and exploitation. Awesome. Great. And so uh, what can you tell us about Elder Abuse Awareness Month? What's going on this month? Well, I'll just interject that we are holding an event at the Doubletree okay. uh, Edgewater, and it'll be on June 15th from 9.30 to 11.30. The public is welcome. We're going to have free refreshments, a free film screening, fleeced, and we'll have a home shredder raffle as well. And we want to get people talking about the elder abuse problem that we're having in Missoula County as well as nationally and what we can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. What is uh, some of the uh, elder abuse problems that are in our community? Well, um, Adult Protective Services investigates abuse, neglect, and exploitation of the elderly and adult disabled. So we have all of those kinds of problems mixed in together. Mm -hmm. But with this focus this month on financial abuse, um, we are definitely more aware of that at this time of year. And do you think that financial abuse is more prevalent than like neglect or any other kind of abuse? Um, I believe self-neglect is our most prevalent mm -hmm. uh, report, but financial abuse is second. Oh. It's um, a lot of family members, caregivers, um, taking advantage of the elderly folks who have money and may not have the wherewithal to protect their own money. Right. Yeah. And what are the um, some of the things put into place to help prevent this from happening? Um, we have uh, staff available to investigate reports, and um, we have a website, aps.mt.gov, where anyone can go on and report if you are seeing uh, abuse, neglect, or exploitation of an elder or an adult disabled. Great. And so what does the Montana Sheriff's Office uh, have to do with uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Month? We, we have, uh, we, we investigate quite a few cases of oh, this. Do you? Um, we have several cases going on. Um, um, folks who have read the paper may have heard about the elderly gentleman up in the Bear Mouth area who um, was, he fell victim to a classic um, lottery scam. Oh no. Um, where essentially people call up saying, oh you've won a big prize, send us this much money for fees. And then that, that, those calls never end. Oh, we need this much to clear the fees. We need this much. And this gentleman ended up getting fleeced out of his entire life savings. Wow. Um, we have had similar cases involving IRS scams where somebody will call up claiming to be a representative of the IRS. Um, you owe back taxes. We have a warrant for your arrest. Uh, deposit this money in this account, otherwise we'll come and arrest you. Right. People are scared of law enforcement. They don't understand that we're never going to show up at your door and arrest you for something like that. We're certainly never going to call you and ask you to deposit money in an account to clear a debt. And so the easiest way to avoid that sort of thing is if you get a call from someone claiming to be from law enforcement, claiming to be from a lottery, politely thank them, hang up the phone, look up the number yourself either online or in the phone book, and call back to see if it's a legitimate organization, legitimate law enforcement agency, or if it's a scam. Mm -hmm. I definitely had someone call me one time and scam me, and then I called the number back and it was a Bozeman Cops, and it was like an answering machine, and I was like, okay, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, one of the scams that I, I constantly hear from a lot of different things is that uh, a lot of um, people call the elderly saying that, oh, your grandson or your mm -hmm. child has been arrested, please send money, that kind of thing. I, I have actually run into that scam where a fellow received a call from someone claiming to be his grandson, saying he was in jail in Mexico, uh, please wire money by, via Western Union to the following number, and this gentleman was, was, you don't sound like my grandson, oh I have a cold grandpa. And it took a while for this gentleman to figure out that, wait a second, this isn't really my grandson. Um, again, simple ways to avoid that. What was the name of your first puppy? Mm -hmm. Something that this person isn't going to know if they're if they're pulling a scam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, elderly who are who like even if they do can recognize a scam. A lot of times um, with a lot of uh, you know Alzheimer's and dementias, a lot of times they forget it, and a lot of times these um, scam artists call them over and over again 
because they know that they have this issue as well. So what can um, we do as a community to help some of our elders? The, this is what events like this are for, is to, to uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are very trusting, mm -hmm. especially elderly people are trusting, mm -hmm. they come from a different, different generation, and they're m much more trusting, much more reluctant to hang up the phone or to tell someone no. Mm -hmm. And so um, we want to make sure that through programs like this, through uh, um, the uh, consumer fraud organizations, a simple way to check is www.fraud.org and it lists the, the kind of scams that are out there. We want to make elderly people, it makes everybody aware of that these kind of, these kind of scams exist, that there are people out there who will sound friendly on the phone, but they are not your friend. And to become aware of these things, we, we're never going to be able to prevent all of it, but the more awareness people have of the kind of scams out there, mm -hmm. the less of this kind of financial fraud, this kind of financial scamming will go on. And so do you guys know how these scam artists get the phone numbers of people? There's, in this modern age of the internet, yeah. that information is available. You can, there are, there are huge millions of dollars involved in marketing mm -hmm. lists of names. Anytime you fill out a survey online, that information is, is sold over the internet. The other, the other ways is, is simply, Calling up, mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, we're uh, we're we're confirming we're from your credit card company. Mm -hmm. We need to confirm your the you know this purchase you made. What's your phone number? What's your address? What's your social security number? And if someone believes, oh, this is my well, it says right there on my caller ID, this right. is my credit card company. Usually, and, usually all it really takes is your name and when were you born. Yeah. yeah, and all the rest of the information they can find out and." Essentially, the, the, the rule of thumb is, if you wouldn't walk up to this person and hand them your credit card and driver's license on the street, don't give it to them over the phone. Right. <laughs> so. Yep. Thanks. So, um, where can people find more information about the Missoula Agent Services and all these other organizations that help prevent any elder abuse as well? Well, we'd like to direct them to our website, Missoula Aging Services. Dot org and also the event at the Double Trees on Eventbrite. Uh, we were on Facebook, um, and all of our partners that are linked in will be linked in through those sources. Awesome. And so when is the when and where is the event? It's June fifteenth, nine thirty a.m. till eleven thirty a.m. at the Double Tree, and people can register ahead of time on Eventbrite and go to our website and or call us at seven two eight seven six eight seven. All right. Well, Thank thanks so for much. joining us, guys. Um, stay with us. We have um, Kim Dudik from the um, hu talking about human trafficking. So um, just stay with us. We'll be right back after this. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! Your smartphone can help you find a bar, alert your friends that you're in the bar, Update you on your team while you're at the bar. And now, let you know you need a ride home from the bar. Hmm, that is smart. Download blood alcohol calculators for your phone at plantolive.mt.gov. A great day for me includes a walk outside with my wife. My great day includes reading a good book. A great day for me includes the morning crossword. Hi you guys, we're back with Guy Baker and Kimberly Dudick and we're talking about um, anti-human trafficking in Montana. So what can you guys tell us about this? 
Well, we are going to be having a conference this Friday. It's called the Stop Human Trafficking in Montana Conference, and it's part of three events. We'll have a red sand project at 730, where participants come and they get a small packet of red sand that they then spread in cracks, and it signifies people falling through the cracks to raise awareness of victims of human trafficking. We then have a full day conference starting at 8.30 and we'll kick it off with Senator John Tester and Attorney General Tim Fox. We're then blessed with a lot of great speakers including Detective Guy Baker who's here with me and others who will tell us all about human trafficking in Montana and how to recognize the signs of human trafficking and how to appropriately respond. And we close the day with a 5K run walk around the university campus. Oh, nice. Yeah, 5.30, so that'll be fun. Great. So, uh, Guy, w w what is your experiences with uh, human trafficking here? So, myself and uh, a DCI agent and an FBI agent in Billings, the three of us probably have worked the most human trafficking cases uh, around the state. And it's been pretty consistent for the last three or four years with uh, an increase in the Missoula area probably due to better awareness after we uh, trained our patrol officers and they have a better understanding of what they're seeing. Yeah, what to look for. And so um, how common is human trafficking in Montana? It's more common than people would think and a lot of people have the, the misperception that this is a crime that occurs in other countries or in large cities in other states when in fact it happens all over the country and it happens here in Missoula and in Montana. So. Um, it's more frequent than people think, as is the sex industry and, and child exploitation, because people are just not aware of it. Yeah. Um, but it's something that's happened, happening daily in Missoula. That's terrible. Yeah. I had no idea. So what are some of the signs that people hmm. should look for? So uh, people that work in the hotel industry, um, there's a lot of different uh, venues in which sex trafficking takes place, and that could include hotels, uh, truck stops, uh, private residences, but it's very commonly online uh, and facilitated in hotels. So suspicious activity, people coming and going from hotel rooms, um, non-age appropriate adults with younger females uh, is a common sign and, and you know, uh, traffic that's, that's excessive for a hotel area or a uh, residence. Mm -hmm. wow. And so if people do see something like this, uh, who can they tell? How can they get like them help? Uh, if they see the suspicious activity, we encourage them to call 911 and report it just like okay. they would anything else that would uh, mm -hmm. you know, pique their attention to think that it might be criminal. So just call 911 we'd get the ball rolling. There's also an organization called the Polaris Project that looks at states and their rates of human trafficking. They have a 1-800 number, it's the National Human Trafficking Resource Center number, and they can call that and get more information about human trafficking and, and find out more if they want. Um, speaking of more, um, you have an event that's coming up this Friday, yes. so let's talk a little bit more about this event and what, what, what people can expect from it. Okay, well at 7.30, like I said, is the Red Sand Project. It will be at the University of Montana oval and people will get red sand to spread on the oval there. Commissioner Stacy Rye will be there to speak a bit about human trafficking and how important she thinks it is that people learn about the signs and the signs of human trafficking. And then the event, um, people who come to the event, the conference, it is at the University Center in the North Ballroom. And they can expect to learn from experts about human trafficking in Montana, what the signs are, as Detective Baker was just saying, and then how to appropriately respond. And we have people there from law enforcement, from the Attorney General's office, from Homeland Security. We'll have an officer there speaking of their Homeland Security campaign. It's called the Blue Campaign. And the conference is free to people who want to come. Lunch is provided and if people want continuing education credits for being a social worker or a therapist, an attorney, or in law enforcement, those are offered for a small fee of $35. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's it's nothing. great. Yeah. And then also we have the 5K run, and so that's just a fun way to close the day and just raise awareness and come together as a community. And so tell us about the Montana Anti-Trafficking Project. Sure, so that's an organization that I started after my first term in the legislature. I became aware of human trafficking, as um, Detective Baker said, most people don't know about it. And, and I really didn't know about it until my first term, and I realized it's modern day slavery. The most typical victim is a 12 to 14 year old girl. And if they get involved in the sex industry, only 2% of them ever get out. So it really can devastate 
children and young, young women especially, people from disadvantaged populations where they don't have a lot of economic opportunity or perhaps they're in the foster care system, they're very vulnerable. So um, I decided that we needed to do more in our state to raise awareness and so we started the organization and been working at it with um, people like Detective Baker, putting on a conference like this. We've had two runs, done different speaking events and we're just trying to raise awareness of this issue and make it more part of the everyday conversation in our state because people need to be aware of it. I agree. I honestly always, I mean, when I think about human sex trafficking, I totally think about like other countries and bigger cities. And like, I think about like North Dakota and the Bakken because that's where I've heard about it the most. But I don't ever think about it like maybe it's at a hotel down the street from where I live. Right. And that's really scary. And so it's really good that you guys are doing this. And uh, so how can people, how can you spread awareness? Like how can people become more aware about this? Well, they can, they can come to the conference on Friday, first of all. They yeah. can come to that. But they can also, they can reach out to the um, anti-trafficking project. Project. We will do any outreach. They can also educate themselves and talk to people about it. It shouldn't be something that we're afraid to talk about. It's a crime that goes on in our state, and it's up to us as a community to stop it. Yeah, I agree. You know, one thing that's important is a lot of people, uh, they confuse sex trafficking with prostitution. And a prostitute would be someone who, on their own volition, is engaging in commercial sex acts, where a trafficking victim is someone who is being compelled through force, fraud, or coercion to engage in commercial sex acts and somebody else's benefit. So, you know, the old adage or belief that you know, they're just prostitutes, um, if they're not choosing to do this, I mean, they're living a terrible life and one that sometimes it just takes one person in the justice system or the community to help them kind of a knight in shining armor that can help them get out of a terrible situation by reporting it. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Uh, where can people find more information? They can go to the Montana Anti-Trafficking Project website and they can register for the events that we'll be having. They can also just come to the university. The uh, conference starts at 8.30 if they want to come or participate in the other events. And they can reach out. All the information is available there online. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Thanks for coming on our show this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be right back after this. We've got Nikki Robb up next. Sergeant Greg Amos with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike-friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Hey, we're here with Nikki Robin. She's here to talk about Give Local as if it didn't end, it's back again. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and we're back. Uh, of course, they're having a celebration tonight from 5 to 8. Uh, please. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure everybody's heard of Give Local by now. That took place on May 3rd. It was a wonderful 24-hour donating event that took place here in Missoula. Um, we raised $234,000 for nonprofits That's in awesome. this town, which is really a good thing. It's really exciting. Um, so tonight is our final Give Local event. So this is really just a community celebration. We've asked community members, you know, anybody can come. Uh, we've asked all the participating nonprofits to come down. We've asked lots of the business sponsors to come down. So really, this is just a thank you to the Missoula County for participating in this really wonderful event. So again, some stats about it. Tonight we will be at Karis Park from five to eight. We've got a couple great bands playing tonight. We've got Justin Lee playing, and we. We also have Mendelssohn. Mm, nice. Yeah, gonna be really great. Um, we've got a bunch of free appetizers provided by Fresh Market, which is wonderful. Yep, everybody loves free food, right? Yep. <laughs> and then uh, we've got some kids' activities. The Zach's coming down. They're gonna be doing some fun kids' activities. We'll have some face painting. Yes. The Mask Studio is gonna come down and do a little Ooh, performance. Yeah. Yes, and right now the weather's looking pretty good. So 
if all things go well, we're going to have a fantastic event. Right. And it's going to be underneath the tent. Yes. And you guys are pulling the walls down, right? Yes, we so it's are. It's going to be very enclosed and very exclusive for very, those of you. Super exclusive. Yes. That's right. VIP community, give local. For anybody. <laughs> for anybody. anybody. We're all you VIP. can be exclusive. Yes. <laughs> you can say you're VIP because it's like, I'm going inside the tent. That's right. <laughs> the pavilion. The pavilion. Oh yeah, the pavilion. Scott's favorite word is pavilion. Uh, nice. We'll it's be under like the, the pavilion. pavilion. Yeah. You can explain anything. Oh, over there, the pavilion. Oh yeah. Um, you guys want to meet at the pavilion later? You're like, we're gonna go up to the pavilion. Yeah. yeah d d d just be sure it's it's the pavilion inside the pavilion. I'm gonna eat lunch. It is the, pavilion. the double pavilion. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Too much. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so please come down and hang out with us tonight. It's going to be a really fun event. Um, we're going to give out some more information about you know the statistics from Give Local, how much we raised, and who were the big donors, and which nonprofits did the best. So if you want to get some of those great information and results, tonight will be the night to hear about it. Yeah. Sweet. I think I uh, I, I don't know if you're ready for this question, but <laughs> maybe um, um, I, I, like one of the bigger things is that Missoula did challenge Bozeman to yes. the um, the raise money. So how did Bozeman do? Who? Well, Bozeman did really well. Um, you know, this was a really good eye-opening experience for us to see that Missoula is kind of like the Bernie Sanders of the race, <laughs> yeah. and Bozeman is a bit more like the Hillary Clinton of the race. So, so in a way, we had more, uh, you know, like, like we had more support from the people, while they had more uh, large individual donations. Yes, yeah. where Missoula's donors averaged about twenty dollars a donation average, um, Bozeman's donated or Bo Bozeman's average donation was closer to hundred dollars. What? So as you can see, <laughs> cool. um, I don't know their exact number, but I think they reached somewhere near the four hundred thousand. Wow. Mark. Yeah. Wait, you know, I that quote is true. Like Missoula is to Bernie Sanders. We are. No true quote. Like yeah. we're we're good people. We donate. No political affiliation with anything whatsoever. No. I, I can't stake my life on this, but I believe we had more donors. Yeah, yes. That's what it sounds so, like. We had donors. actually more donors, but not as much money raised. Yeah. But Montana as a whole, all the five communities in Montana that participated raised about eight hundred thousand oh, dollars for the awesome. state. Yeah, that's great. Really great. Eight hundred thousand dollars for the state of Montana is fantastic. And this yes, all goes is. to nonprofits. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Cool. How many nonprofits are in Missoula? Oh man. Well, I hear there's like close to a thousand. There's more than that. There's actually like the there's more yeah. like fourteen hundred or something. Wow. But there's a couple organizations that all of them have to register out of Missoula. So mm -hmm. if you were just talking functioning, participating nonprofits in Missoula, you're probably closer to the like six to eight hundred mark. Okay. Yeah, because I um, Joel said because um, he interviews all the nonprofits here in town and he's interviewed people for the last twenty years and he says he has he he has the list of probably about. Uh, 800 different nonprofits, uh -huh. and of course that's the last 20 years, you know, how right. many new yeah. ones came, how many uh, old ones left, yeah. how many of them changed, because mm -hmm. they don't really go away, they just change. Yeah, they change. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> change the name. They change mold the a little bit. Yeah, uh -huh. it's true. We're the land of nonprofits. We really are. We are. Hey, we're a giving community, you know. That's, we live in Montana it's because we like this place and we want to make it better for the people that live here and for the people that are going to be living here, so yep. hence the lots of nonprofits. I can agree more. <laughs> All right, awesome. so one more time, one more final pitch. All right, one more final pitch. Come down to Karis Park tonight between 5 and 8. We're going to have great music. It's all a free event, free appetizers, and free kids' activities. Come down and find out the results of Give Local Missoula County 2016. Hope to see you tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And we will be right back after this with uh, community events, uh, a musical notes with ASAP Fat and I, as well as Hallmarker Bullmark. Yes, we will have that. Hallmarker Bullmark. <laughs> we'll be right back, you guys. Nice to be here. That was an amazing run up of people. And I just want to say thanks to Mark Moss. If we could just give him a huge round of applause. Awesome. So I was always warned growing up about the dangers of drug addiction and what that might look like if you happen to fall into that peril, uh, the opportunities that might be lost, friendships. Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam, where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. Here's your bear spray, babe. I don't need it. I can outrun them. Look, I ran track in high school. No, you can't. You're not supposed to run from bears. And you did the shot put. 
Okay, I'll spray down. What? No, don't spray it! Hi, you guys, we are back. Okay, uh, we've got community events. So this is what's happening in Missoula. And uh, because our show was so full with interviews, I'm just doing events for Wednesday. So this is what's going on in Missoula on Wednesday. Um, you, if you want to find out more information about the events I'm talking about, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Uh, so starting at 11 a.m. over at Spectrum Discovery area is their, uh, their, it looks like their discovery bench is chromatography and the brain lab is laughable neurotransmitter necklaces. That's going to be weird. I don't know what that means, but sweet. And then they also have their science sprouts. This is for the little ones that's also at Spectrum Discovery area, also at 11, and it's for ages 3 to 5. Oh, 2 to 5. Sorry, you guys. And then also uh, over at Ruth's Acro Sports Center, we've got a preschool playgroup starting at 11. It's for ages walking to five years. Uh, it's only $8 to drop in, $12 if you've got siblings. And they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and the parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want. It sounds super fun. Uh, and then over at the Children's Museum of Missoula at 11 is their rice table. It's their sensory rice table. You can sift, scoop, and pour. If you guys have never played with rice before, it's pretty fun. And you can also eat it. It's like a double win. <laughs> Uh, over at Peaceful Heart Yoga is Parent Yoga. It's yoga for you while your kids play. This is an opportunity for you to improve your strength and flexibility and work out and you know get into your zen without having to worry about childcare. Yeah, and so that starts at one. At two o'clock, over at the Missoula Public Library is their afternoon matinee. That'll be in the large meeting room, and it's usually a classic and recent feature, and it's always free. Middle School Writers is also happening at the Missoula Public Library. That's at 3.30. This is a writing group for grades 6 through 9. And they get feedback, give feedback, play with words, and eat some chocolate. And yeah, it's at 3.30, so it's right after school. Over the Top Hat Lounge is their Sharing in the Groove Happy Hour. So this is uh, from 4.30 on. I don't really know how long it lasts. But they've got shows from Fish. And then they also have like audio video shows. And then they've got trivia and a happy hour and all the stuff that you could want from Fish. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this next event is pretty cool. Over at Plowshare Farm, uh, they've got a Farmer Field Day and it Farmer Field Day, and they're talking about growing for a farmer's market. So that starts at five this evening. They're going to discuss crop planning, harvest, and other preparations. And we'll host an interactive demonstration around the aesthetics and functionality of setting up an effective farmer's market booth. Um, I tried to look for the address, but it said it's going to be provided. So if you guys just call 830-8218, Eight, uh, you can get a hold of them and yeah. find out where it's gonna be. And I suggest that a couple booths at the farmers market should actually do this because uh, they're not doing a good job. No. There's a couple of them that are just terrible. Like I looked for a second and I was like, "Can I help you?" I was just like, "Leave." Please, I, I'll let you like, know if you can help me. Yeah. You know, what you're supposed to do is just sit there, all pleasant like, and if somebody looks there, you just say, "Hello, good mm -hmm. day to you, sir." It's like, oh, good day to you too, sir. It's true. Would it's you proper. like to buy some of my vegetables? It's like, oh, I'm just looking. Well, you're welcome to come by here anytime. It's like, oh, thank you. That is proper farmer's market market etiquette. That's like any kind of etiquette. I don't know about Well, like when I answer the phone <laughs> at MCAT, I'm like really nice because I've been told that uh, talking to me on the phone is really um, insufferable. <laughs> Because I'm just like, what do you want? <laughs> what? I'm busy editing. I just want to know who, what, where, when, why, like it within 30 seconds and then done. <laughs> but nowadays, I'm a lot better on the phone on MCAT. That's I'm good. just like, hi, this is Scott, hi, MCAT. I love MCAT. He's like, oh, he's not here right now, but I can totally help you. Oh, that's good, Scott. Yeah, I'm, I'm very helpful on the phone. Good, now yeah. you are. Most people are just like, is Joel there? It's like, this is MCAT. You should call MCAT, not Joel. <laughs> that's why one thing that gets me is that Joel knows everyone, and everyone loves Joel. So yeah. they'll call him, they'll come in, they'll be like, Joel, let's talk for two hours. Well, and he's just like... I have to answer emails. <laughs> when um, it, when um, when Joel retires and MCAT's lucky enough to be around, hopefully in the library. And I'm when gonna, Scott takes and then over. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to rename it. Like if Scott's going to take over uh, and rename it. Well, I'm going to suggest to rename it if I'm not the boss then. But anyways, I'm going <laughs> to rename <laughs> He will be, though. You'll well, I'm going to rename it, and it's called uh, Joel Baird Media Center. 
Hilarious. You definitely should. Well, it, it, like it's uh, we're already kind of considering it's not it's not going to be called MCAT because television is kind of going out of the way. Yeah. So we're going to change like the whole idea is going to be Missoula Community Media Center so, I think or that'd be MC great. Squared. MC Squared. Missoula Community Media Center sounds awesome. And then there's like a shirt that says Missoula Community, and then like the MC is kind of like slightly uh, lopsided, so it's M, and then a C slightly down, so it goes Missoula County Media Center. That'd be cool. So it's going to be kind of like a. Like so that. we've already planning our shirts before we even it's called things. it's called like when you get inspiration you just can't you just can't hold that you just can't hold it you just can't hold it <laughs> okay so i just have a couple more events for you guys about a few more pages uh over at the missoula art museum tonight is a missoula art museum volunteer party it starts at five um and so that is for all of the volunteers uh they're thanking them for their energy time and enthusiasm for another great year so if you are a volunteer part volunteer person for the ma'am you can join them for appetizers and drinks at 5. You can RSVP to Allison, A-L-I-S-O-N, at MissoulaArtMuseum.org, or you can call 728-0447. Over at the Montana Natural History Center, starting at 6 tonight, is that they're going to be discussing the state of the elk. And so they're going to be learning about the health and habitats of the region's elk population. Um, yeah, that sounds awesome. So that starts at 6. Also at 6, over at the Zootan Arts Community Center is their Bob Ross night. Uh, and so you can follow along to a Bob Ross video and uh, drink some wine and just have a ton of fun. Over the public library, they've got jewelry making workshop in their makerspace that also starts at 6. You can uh, find new projects and enjoy a collaborative at workshop atmosphere. Makes me miss Rob P. Yeah, our homeboy. Uh, over at the Sunrise Saloon is country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark. So only for $5, you can learn how to square dance and get your country on. It starts at 7. Also at 7 is live bingo at the Dark Horse. Um, and then at 8.30 is a karaoke contest at the Eagles Lounge. Yeah. I know, that doesn't suck, great. Okay. And then there is live bingo at the Dark Horse at 7. There's... Oh, oh you just said that. <clears throat> oh, did I? Oh, you accidentally scrolled up. No, I scrolled down. Oh, it more live like, bingo? Yeah, no. My things have repeated. So it's live bingo at the Dark Horse. And then karaoke at the sunrise at nine, and then karaoke at the badland at nine. Yeah, my it looked like my uh, things were repeated, and I just uh, wasn't paying attention to myself. So, but that's what's going on in your community. As always, check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, the Independent, and the Missoulian for all of your events. Mm -hmm. Everything that I just talked about is from the MissoulaEvents.net. Yeah. Cool. And uh, we have an art clip for you guys. Of course, we've been showing this forever, and this is the last time we get to show this art clip because it ends tomorrow. And this is Hellgate High School artist featured at the, I believe it's the Missoula Art Museum. So, um, and then when we come back, we'll have Asaf talking about Star Trek or something like that. Cool. about Barbara Billingsley and Leave It to Beaver. 
And I also talked about the unseen Aunt Martha on the series, you know, when they talk about someone that you never see or you think of happy days. Remember <laughs> Richie Cunningham had the older brother? You never saw him, but he was always in his room. <laughs> well, there's a third unseen character on television, and this is called Mrs. Columbo. You remember the Columbo series with Peter Falk? He always talked about his wife when he was talking, uh, you know, solving a crime. Well, anyway, our guest here, this lady is known as Mrs. Columbo. They exposed her at the end of the series. And uh, so that's what Columbo history tells. Our guest is also known, she made history in the Star Trek fan franchise as the first female captain of the entire Star Trek shows. And there she is. She plays Cap uh, Captain Catherine Janeway of the USS Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> on Star Trek Voyager. Our guest, her name is Catherine Kiernan Maria, known to the world as Kate Mulgrew. Now, the premise of Voyager takes place in the year 2370. Voyager is 70,000 light years from the Earth, lost in space, you know, like Gene Lockhart, and they're stranded in the Delta Quadrant, and so it will take them 75 years to get back to Earth. Oh, that sounds awful. That's how far out in space they are. So they actually never get back to Earth, but they encounter stuff in the series. Now, leading up to this, Kate Mulgrew is an American actress with a career spanning four decades. She first came to prominence as this character here, Mary Ryan, on a soap opera called Ryan's Hope. You may have heard me mention that when I did the story on Susan Lucci and All My Children. Mm -hmm. Well, both of those soap operas came on at the same time, and this lady soared on the map because after Ryan's Hope ended, that followed her throughout her entire career. Also, as I stated, she's best known for playing Catherine Janeway in Voyager, and she plays a character called Galena Red Resnick on the uh, Netflix Orange is the New Black. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is right there. She has performed many television shows, theater productions, and film, earning, get this, a variety of awards for her acting, including the Obie Award, spelled O-B-I-E, the Golden Satellite Award, the Saturn Award, the Golden Globe Award, Primetime Emmy Award nominations, and she's also a member of the Alzheimer's Association National Advisory Council. Isn't that something? Yeah, she's good. So got this lady's very flexible. She looks kind of kooky in the Orange is the New Black. but She's she supposed has, to be in prison, though. Yeah, yeah. I realize that. But she uh, <laughs> has spent her life with the uh, Alzheimer's Association helping people with those issues. She oh. was born in 1955 in Iowa. And she, at 17, went to the Stella Adler Conservatory of Acting which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was on Ryan's Hope in 1975. That's how far back that goes. And Kate also presented the creator of Ryan's Hope with the Soap Opera Digest Award. Claire Le LeBane was her name. This was in 1995 when Claire got the award and Kate presented it. And um, this is funny how life works out. In 1995, Kate suffered a devastating divorce. She, had, she was on the verge of selling her house to move into a lesser apartment when the call came to play Captain Janeway and it changed everything in her life. She went on to raise two children with the salary she made from that series. That series was really good to her. That series was on for seven seasons. Wow, that's good. Yeah, and of course now after that series ended, she did more theatrical work. She did a play called, um, let me see if I can pronounce, yeah, T for Five, one of those little Broadway things. And of course she wound up on Law and Order in 2006, uh, you know, it's Special Victims Unit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, of course she's currently doing her Orange to New Black. So that's kind of a flyover nice. of everything this lady has done. Cool, she's Just, done a lot. Yeah, and you know, it was a neat, another neat thing about this lady with her um, being the first female captain, she was breaking stereotypes. Mm, mm -hmm. And even William Shatner interviewed all <laughs> the captains throughout the entire Star Trek franchise. So by the time Shatner got to her, 
she stood out like a sore thumb. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did a lot of stuff for women. Go ahead, girl. Nice. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Asa. So that's my story on Kate Mulgrew, and your audience can look her up and check cool. out her entire career. Nice. Thanks, Thanks Asa. That was Musical Notes with Asa Adonai. And now... It's time for Hallmark or Bullmark. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready to play the game? Uh, let me explain it to you guys. Uh, first of all, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you guys at home and here have to guess whether or not it's an actual Hallmark original movie or it's complete bullmark. So are you guys ready to play? Yeah! Alright. And I'm not going to like uh, say... I can't hear you. No, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just <laughs> gonna do it. No, no, like uh, that, that's like oh, yeah. that's I like can't hear you. that's like literally my most hated thing. It's like when somebody said whether it's like someone's emceeing at a place and they're just yeah. like, hey guys, uh, how about uh, tonight? Uh, yeah. I was like, I can't hear you, and it's like, shut up. Yeah. We already made noise. Just get on with it. <laughs> I know. Get on with it. <laughs> get on with it. Come on. And hit it, ASAP. <laughs> When a young, single attorney finds out that her charming mother is about to get married to a TV star known as much for his failed marriage as his acting career, she tries to stop the wedding, but what she finds is that sometimes when you wish upon a falling TV star, you can get everything you ever wanted. The movie is called Stop the Wedding! There's no exclamation point, I just like it because it says Stop the Wedding. So, um... I ask you guys, and I ask you at home, is this a Hallmark original movie, or is this Bullmark? Otherwise known as Hallmark or Bullmark. What do you guys think? Oh, gosh. What do you think, Asa? With that line about catch a TV star, I'm going to say it's real. I'm going to say Hallmark, too. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay, Hallmark. You're going to say Hallmark? We both yeah, say Hallmark. Too. Yeah. You guys are right. Yeah. And I, I made up the last that line. That made me suspicious there. But he I made up. that last line up. Yeah, that's what made me... Um, Think it was real, it's but it, that's the that's like has nothing to do with the movie. I realize like, that. I mean, it, I don't know. But it was so good. It. The way I wrote it is like when you wish upon a fallen TV star. Yeah, that was hilarious. That should be yeah. the name. Uh, that's going to be a name of another movie. When you wish upon a fallen TV star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be Scott's first debut movie. Or when you wish upon a falling star. It, it'll yeah. All right, <laughs> let's hit it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Sorry about Last one. Are you guys ready to play? Yeah. You're already, it's already on you. We're ready. When two commitment-phobic workaholics are asked to be best man and maid of honor, worlds collide. As these two figure out that wedding bells bring out the commitment in everybody. But when the wedding is over, will these two stay for the reception? <laughs> is this, and the movie's called Wedding Bells. Is this a Hallmark original movie, or is this a Bullmark? Of course, today's theme is weddings. Um... Should we start with ASAP? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, what do you I'm think? I'm gonna say it's real. You think it's Hallmark? Okay, let's see. Usually, uh, ASAP uh, doubts me every single step of the way. He always says Bullmark. ASAP is usually pretty right, too. <laughs> I was just lucky guess, you know. I listen to the story. No, he doesn't too. guess. He's, uh, it's like he has intuition or something. I just listen to your story and I can try to figure it out. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna say Hallmark too. You're gonna say Hallmark too? Uh, I I guess I lose. Yay! It is a Hallmark original movie, and it stars uh, Danica McKellar, which oh, okay. is uh, the, the uh, who plays Wendy in The Wonder Years. Oh, really? Yeah. Funny. And oh. she's also like a math genius too. Oh wow! No, I know. Right? Amazing. <laughs> she's great. <laughs> but of course. Uh, to That's play hilarious. this game and more, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. You'll see um, current and past episodes along with uh, interviews that we've done. So if you want to check out the interviews that we've done today, we're going to basically replace all these interviews that were on our show as mm -hmm. well because yep. we only have three slots. We could have more, but, you know, three is good enough. Um, you could like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. That's Miss simple. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. We have a Facebook as well, like Missoula Community Access Television on Facebook. And to find out more information about us, go to MCAT.org. Of course, if you're interested in being on our show, 
like many of our guests were. See, we have guests. We do. Yes. Um, you could <laughs> log on to MCAT.org. You can call and you can find the number there, or you can um, call us if you remember this number that's about to come out of my mouth, which is 542 6228, and of course, area code 406. But if you're in Montana, you should already know that. It's um, also 542 MCAT. Yes, 542 MCAT. Yes. I've said so many times, <laughs> Noel can't forget it now. No. <laughs> but I forget the other day, actually. <laughs> but uh, um, you can email us mcat at mcat.org if you're too scared to um, call us. And yeah. you can just say, hey, I have an event that's coming up and I want to talk about it. Uh, my band's playing. I have a rally coming up. You're I want to do this. Artist. Uh, yeah. Anyone. We're, anyone we're, we're, that's got stuff Yeah, we've had on. artists on here before. Yeah. We don't have that many artists. We're, no, we're always we encouraged because uh, First Friday is always the first Friday of the month. Yes. And uh, coincidentally, uh, we're always <laughs> looking for an artist to feature uh, for each uh, First Friday. So like yeah. a Wednesday next Wednesday hopefully yeah so um um, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to uh, uh, all these groups. Uh, Nikki Rob from uh, talking about Give Local, and of course the human, the anti Montana anti human human trafficking ta um, task force project project project, and then also uh, Human Protective Services and Missoula Aging Services and the Montana Sheriff's Department. Yes, because task force sounds very uh, yeah, or Missoula forceful. Sheriff's is it Missoula County Sheriff's Department? It's I think it's a lot of different organizations, yeah. but he, he um, but he's Guy from Baker. Um, Guy Baker, I know, is he? He's, he's a detective. He's a detective and based out of Glenville. Helena who works with a federal agent yeah. and uh, other county officers around the state. So he works with a lot of people and a lot of the uh, things. Um, I think it's very heavily with Highway Patrol as well. Yeah, and then Glenville is part of Mich uh, the Missoula County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. And so he lives in Missoula. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. And Missoula Agent Service, thanks for yeah. joining us. It's Always. Elder Abuse Awareness Month mm -hmm. next month, so uh, be aware of uh, any abuse that's going yeah. towards our uh, aging population. Yep. As well as any young girls you see, they may be suspicious. There's lots of crime going on. So yep. just keep I'm, a lookout, you guys. I'm in the middle, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Not for now. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, for Wicked Missoula, my name is Noah McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramph. Here's ASAP Adonai.